Volvo has gone and chopped the roof off its electric XC40 recharge to create the more stylish C40 recharge. It shares a lot with the XC40 recharge, including its all-electric powertrain. The C40 recharge is 2.2 tonnes, however, which is a hell of a lot of weight, and it may not come as a huge surprise as it's a crossover, but it's an electric crossover and EVs tend to be heavy anyway due to their batteries. So just how much energy does it take to move it? As SUVs go, it's an attractive looking car and the C40 Recharge boasts some serious figures, even with the single motor and that 2.2 tonnes. From the 75 kilowatt hour battery, you'll get around 440 kilometres of range, which isn't bad, but there's always room for more, especially if stuck with slow charging. It can be a little inconvenient time-wise. It costs €58,980 for the ultimate spec, and this comes with a heat pump, or €53,980 after the current SEAI grant is applied. And if you like, you can go through the entire purchase process online. The C40 is available with single motor, front wheel drive, and twin motor, four wheel drive setups. The three available trim levels are the Core, Plus and Ultimate. Core models are only available with the single motor, however. It's possible to charge from 10 to 80% with 155 kilowatts fast charging in around 28 minutes and home charging from 0 to 100% with an 11 kilowatt AC fast charging takes around 8 hours. The C40 has always been a family hatchback, and the new C40 Recharge is a coupe crossover version of the XC40 Recharge. It's got the same front end as the XC40, including a high bonnet line with some sharp looks at the front, but unlike the XC40, there's a blank grille which lets the general public know that this is an EV. The cabin is similar to what you get in the XC40 Recharge, right down from the vent design, the screens and even the steering wheel. If you choose the C40 Recharge, there's a new topography trim level. When you run your hand over the dashboard, you can feel the terrain. It's quite arty and really very nice, and there's also no leather in the car. Everything you see in the cabin is leather free. You've got faux leather at the side of the seat and on the steering wheel. It all feels very high quality and you also have suede in the centre of the seats. The Google based infotainment system is responsive, sharp and intuitive to use. The 9 inch portrait touchscreen runs Android's automotive software. This means instead of using Volvo's own sat-nav system, you're now using Google Maps, and it's capable of receiving over-the-air software updates. We found this new interface to be more responsive than Volvo's outgoing sensor system, but its on-screen buttons are smaller and more difficult to actuate while driving. Also, as part of the Android OS, it means that more apps will be available for download through the Google Play Store. A digital gauge display and premium hardened carbon stereo system are also both included in the Ultimate Pack. The biggest change is this new coupe-like roofline. When you sit in the rear of the C40 Recharge, the sloping roof does cut into the headroom a little bit, but still has plenty of room. If you need more rear space for larger adults, you'd want to go for the XC40 Recharge. Leg room is pretty decent with the tall driver in front, there's a fair bit of knee room, and the back is quite bright and airy when you've optioned the panoramic sunroof. As for the rest of the proportions, the C40 Recharge is pretty much exactly the same as the XC40 Recharge as it's on the same platform. 
It's not just the roof line that's different, it has a sleeker silhouette, but is actually 69mm lower than the XC40. The rear lights are vertical LED tail lights at the top and the horizontal lines light up at night. There's a tiny little lip spoiler and two indents on the roof for that sportier look. The C40 may look good, but unfortunately the sleekness has had an effect on the boot space, which is only around 414 litres. This is quite a bit less than the 452 available on the XC40 Recharge, and also it's not as spacious as Audi's Q4 e-tron, which has over 500 litres. It's by no means a small boot. If you do move a lot of luggage around, you're probably going to want to lean towards the Audi for that extra bit of boot space. There is some underfloor storage in the boot to hide away the cables, and there's also a frunk. It's not the biggest frunk out there, but it is big enough to store the charging cables. Using the one pedal driving mode, the C40 will come to a complete stop and hold until the accelerator is pressed again. You can turn this mode on and off, but I much prefer the more natural feel of driving with it off. This, however, comes at an energy loss. What stands out is just how nippy it is, especially as it's been designed as a family crossover. It can get from 0 to 100 km per hour in just 7.4 seconds. On the surface it doesn't feel massively compromised. It's really fast in a straight line, but the suspension is softly sprung and there's such a nice steering feel. I really enjoy the fact that it's driver oriented and takes the lead from Polestar. If you want something a bit more relaxed with less driver focused ambitions and coupe looks, you could probably go for the Audi Q4 e-tron Sportback. Less stylish and more expensive is Ford's Mustang Mach-E, which has great pace in GT form. If you wanted an even more stylish and performance focused EV, then you could look at the Polestar 2.